What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with Jeff Fry, SheGoneHitting.com. But we're not talking about hitting right now. Nope. We're out here at Shortstop. We're going to talk a little bit of fielding today. And I want you to talk about, you were telling me a little bit before, you had a great coach, a great mentor when you were in pro ball, and he taught you something, four things about fielding that really stuck with you. Um, let's talk about it. Yes, uh, it's Perry Hill is his name. He's currently an uh, infield coach for the Seattle Mariners big league team and third base coach. Um, Perry was the roving infield instructor with the Texas Rangers when I was drafted in 1988. And I mean, when I first showed up, I mean, I was pretty raw. I, I mean, I used to catch the ball underneath me. My arm was way back here from a second baseman and he basically molded me into a major league infielder. And what he taught us was, um, I know now it's the six F's, I don't really know what it is exactly but for me it was catch the ball in the middle funnel replace your feet and follow your throw and that stuck with me so every time I took the field in a major league baseball game I went out to second base kicked the base and reminded myself middle funnel replace your feet follow your throw and it's funny you mentioned the six F's I told you a story before about I, ha I have an apology for Perry Hill Perry if you're watching this I'm very sorry I did a video of the six F's of fielding which the guy I had on got it from one of his rovers who got it, probably got it from Perry. So if you saw that video, that information is coming from the man, Perry Hill. This is my apology. I'm sorry I was telling Jeff that I'm sorry for that. There was no intention of stealing your stuff. It's great information. And I think that's why it got carried on right. along the way. And right. it's something that you loved, right? You were telling oh, me yeah. when he mentioned your name. I was like, oh man, I got to tell you something because I think Perry was a little pissed at me for yeah. a while. So well, there, Perry, I'm sorry. I think there's a lot of guys that Perry had over the years that have become coaches that probably teach what um, Perry taught us. And so, I mean, it's so good. It's such great information and it worked for so many people that it should be actually an honor that it's carrying on. So Yeah. Perry, I'd love to have you on anytime. So, uh, but let's talk about, you were talking about the pre-pitch kind of, uh, the way you approached. How, how did you do that? Yeah. So, um, as an infielder, you kind of know where you want to be positioned most times. Um, usually it's back on the, uh, the edge of the grass. Okay. That's where I want it be when the ball's in the strike zone. So I would walk a few steps behind the grass, okay, and always watching it, especially if there's base runners. I never took my eye off the base runners. I'm always watching the field, what's going on. And what Perry taught us was just to take little baby steps, baby steps while the pitcher's getting ready in his delivery. And as soon as the ball's in the strike zone, he wants you on your toes, ready to move either way. So baby step, and I mean, you have to do this sometimes 150, 200 times a game. So it's baby steps, baby steps, on your toes, down, ready to move. So after you do that, let's say he hits the ball to you, the guy hits the ball to you, you're ready to go, you can go in, you can go right, you can go left, you can charge it, you can come back and catch it over your shoulder, you can even jump if it's a line drive because you're in the perfect position. Mm -hmm. So let's say he hits it to you, what's the next step? The next step is to read the ball. Read the ball and every ground ball is different. Okay, some have top spin, some have back spin and you get you learn how to read the ball over time and you want to read the ball to where you're getting a knee high or a belt high hop, okay? You don't want to get in between. If you get enough balls in between and boot enough balls, you're gonna finally figure out how to read the baseball, okay? And you can see how the swing is a lot of times, um, how many bounces you're gonna get. Um, but basically just walking in, ready, read the ball, catch it in the middle, funnel, replace your feet and follow your throw towards your target. And that's, I mean, that's what worked for me my whole career. Middle funnel, replace your feet, follow your throw. Even if it's a backhand, I catch it in the middle. You see how I turn my glove, it's still in the middle. Catch it, funnel, replace your feet, follow your throw. And the follow your throw was kind of tough at first to get used to because I'd never heard that. But what it taught me was that when I took one or two steps toward the base, it gave the ball better carry. Okay, and I'd always try to get a four seam grip. Um, and take a couple steps toward the base and I did that almost every single time and it really helped me have accurate throwing arm okay sometimes you catch a ball and you're lazy throw it like this is the time you mess up and make an error so I never wanted to make a, mis a mental mistake by being lazy so I'm always focused on doing it exactly how Perry taught me you we talk and everybody talks about timing and hitting but it seems like timing and fielding is just as important trying to time where you play yourself in relation to that ball when it's hopping, right? Right. And what about the runner? Like, are you paying attention to who's running down there? Does that 
go into a, a you, does that mess you, you, do you change anything, depending on the runner, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, you should always know who's hitting, okay, before the ball's hit to you. Okay, now, when you're an amateur, sometimes you're playing against people you're not used to, you don't really know, okay? So, but in the professional ranks, in the big leagues, we knew who the guys that can run were, okay? So, if it's a guy who can really run, I might have to shorten up a little bit, get a little bit closer. I know I don't have any margin for error, right? And I was going to play the ball and not let the ball play me. I'm not going to lay back on the ball and be at mercy of whatever hop. I'm going to be aggressive. Once I see it's bouncing, where I'm going to get a good hop, then I break down right before, middle funnel, place your feet, follow your throw. But I knew who was hitting before they hit the ball. So I already had an idea of how much time I would have. If it was a slow catcher, I knew I just had to you know, make a good solid throw. If it's Kenny Lofton or some you know, Vince Coleman or somebody like that, I can't mess around. I have to catch the ball and get rid of it um, because he's going to beat it out if I don't. Let me ask you this. What about like your routine? Like let's say you're in the big leagues, you got a uh, game, seven o'clock game, whatever it is. Like what, what was your daily routine? Were you taking a ton of ground balls beforehand? Were you just taking a little bit? Were you relying on your skills? What Maybe what were you doing? Were you doing glove side, backhand, charging? Like what was your kind of routine? I'm sure it changed over time, but it a did. typical one. It did. Uh, generally, we had the, the field during a big league game, big league normal big league um, game, we had the field for about 50 minutes, and that's it, right? We didn't go out and have the field because they have to get the field ready for the game. Uh, occasionally, if you were at home and maybe you were struggling on something, you could go out early and work on some stuff, maybe double plays or whatever. We did a lot more of that in the minor leagues than the major leagues. The major leagues, basically, you had 15 minutes to hit and 30 minutes out in the field, okay? So after I hit, I would go to my position and, and take ground balls, routine ground balls, maybe take some throws, double play throws from the third baseman or the shortstop, or maybe I'd give some double play feeds to the second baseman. Not too much, just enough to get your work in, because in an hour from now, it's game time, and I don't want to be tired, but I at least want to feel like I'm ready. And, and also, when I came up, we used to take infield all the time, you know, and now they hardly take infield anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was really more for the scouts to, to scout the opposition and see their their arm strength and if they're good fielders and maybe things they can take advantage of. So I don't know if that's why they stopped doing it, but uh, you don't really see it happen very yeah, much. Yeah, that's anymore. funny you say that. That's that's very interesting. Let me ask you this. Were you trying to take more uh, balls off a live BP, or do you like to take them off the fungo guy? Fungo guy, fungo usually. Guy. Usually. I would, I would take some off the fungo first because, and Perry was the man when it came to fungo. I mean, perfect hop. And sometimes you'd get a coach who was up there just hitting rockets at you, and it would do more harm than good. You know, if I'm out there like a goaltender, um, when I'm taking my, you know, 25 ground balls for the game, it's not going to help my footwork and my timing. So Perry had that right speed, a little backspin on the ball, and, and we just work on your timing, your rhythm, your footwork, um, you know, getting the ball out of your glove and, and making a good solid throw. And it, it really wasn't like a lot of repetition. It was just good quality repetition and, and get your work in. That's it. This may be a tough question, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but if there's a young player, young fielder, maybe shortstop, uh, second baseman, middle infielder, maybe corner infielder, whatever, and he has the aspirations to play in the big leagues, what, what, what advice would you give to him? What, what advice would you give to 15-year-old Jeff Fry, you know, coming up, what, if they wanted to make it to the big leagues? Outwork the competition. You have to. And it... You have to give everything you have. You can't practice enough. Um, and I always did that. I didn't have any brothers or sisters. I had I find a wall and, and have a rubber ball or a tennis ball and go out there and work on it. Short hops, backhands, everything. And just constantly practicing. I tried to get better every single day in some way. And I had to because I wasn't, you know, just physically gifted. I had to outwork the competition. And I took pride in that. And I also took pride in trying to prove people that I could do it even though my size and stature wasn't like m what most major leaguers was like. That's great advice, man. That's, that, I mean, that's, you can't beat that advice. You gotta put in the work. If you got a goal and you want something bad enough, you gotta put in the work to make it happen. So I appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys got any comments or questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. We'll hop down there, talk with you a little bit. Don't forget to go check out Jeff uh, on shegonhitting.com. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll leave the link down below. Click on that, subscribe. Uh, all that good stuff. Perry Hill, my man, I'm sorry. I'd love to have you on the channel. Anytime you want, we'll talk. 
uh, fielding, whatever you want to talk about. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.